Um, uh, just want to welcome everybody here tonight to uh, our first downtown forum for our downtown planning initiative. Uh, my name is Michael Herbert. Uh, I am the town manager here. And uh, again, I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time out of your Monday night uh, to come here at 630, a nice rainy, rainy evening, and help us uh, hopefully come to what's the first of several meetings regarding um, our downtown planning initiative. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to uh, introduce a number of people that are with us tonight. First, I'd like to introduce um, our consultants who, uh, from BSC Group, who have, uh, we engaged our, those consultants uh, several months ago, and they're running this program tonight, putting it all together. Uh, from BSC Group, we have Jeff Fasser over here at the table, um, Bill Paley uh, here at the center table, and Heather George Alice uh, from Tool Design Group. Um, they're here, they're going to help uh, facilitate this program. Um, I would also like to introduce a couple of people out here in the audience uh, that deserve to be recognized. Uh, first of all, State Representative Jack Lewis is here. Took time out of his busy schedule to come. Thank you very much. Um, Board of Selectmen member Yolanda Greaves is here somewhere. Yolanda, there she is. Um, last but not least, our birthday boy, Mr. Steve Mitchell from our Board of Selectmen is here. So Steve's celebrating his 50th birthday with us tonight. So, um, again, I, I want to thank you all for, for coming here. You know, downtown uh, is a topic that comes up a lot in a lot of different conversations. And communities all across the United States have really put a renewed focus on their downtowns over the last several decades, really. And, and why is that? Why, why do so many cities and towns put an emphasis on um, a specific section of their community. So planner Andy Kitzinger, who's uh, based out in Memphis, he's able to summarize downtown's importance to a community in really a couple of different ways. First, downtowns are iconic and powerful symbols for a town. They often contain the most important and iconic landmarks, distinctive features, and unique places within that town. And given that downtowns oftentimes we're one of the oldest neighborhoods in town. They offer rare insights into a city's past, present, and their future. I don't think any one of us can think about downtown Ashland without thinking about important community buildings um, such as the Federated Church or Town Hall or the Mill Building or Ocean House. Um, second, a community's downtown area has an important and unique role in the economic and social development of a community. Uh, they create a critical mass of activities where commercial, cultural, and civic activities are concentrated. And that concentration actually facilitates everything from commerce, learning, and it also serves as a cultural change. I can think of no better example of that in the town of Ashland than the farmer's market. How many of you have been able to go to the farmer's market on a Saturday? Just raise your hands. Um, anybody who's ever been able to go to the farmer's market can tell you that it's not just a place for commerce, it's not just a place for local people or, or people from around the region to come and sell their produce, but it's also a place where a lot of community building happens, where there's a lot of exchange of ideas. So now that we know why we focus on downtowns in general, how are we going to focus on Ashland's downtown? I think that's the critical question we need to ask. Um, one of the questions that I've been asking over the last one and a half years is really, what do we in town, in the town of Ashland, what do we want to be? We've been trying to both ask and answer this question during our strategic planning process, which has been going on for several months now. And regardless of whether or not we're talking about things like housing or transportation, economic development, community development, the topic inevitably comes to downtown. There's really a general consensus, I think, of what people want to see in our downtown. They want a place that's vibrant. They want a place that's active. They want a place that's safe. Um, a place where you, know, you can go and grab a drink with your friends and maybe go and uh, catch some entertainment at, uh, at a local establishment. A place where maybe um, you can go with your spouse and get a nice bite to eat and maybe take a nice stroll. Um, downtown to Mill Pond or near, near the river, in a place where you can enjoy some of those natural amenities that only Ashland has. Um, you know, a lot of people want more commercial and retail space in general, just a, a place where they can go and, and shop and feel a part of the community. But I think there's also a few questions that people are not so sure about. So for example, everybody wants 
What's the one thing that everybody talks about having in downtown? Anybody want to take a guess? Coffee shop. A coffee shop, exactly. Everybody wants to have a coffee shop. But it's funny, in our recent experience with the coffee trike over at the corner spot, we found that after that initial excitement and momentum wore off, after that first couple of weeks wore off, um, people were less inclined to go visit the coffee trike. And it really took things like special events or weekends for people to want to go there. Um, and also, responses from our co-urbanized platform, which I can talk about a little bit uh, later, indicate that while people really want a coffee shop, it's really hard for them to commit to going to one on a regular basis except for on the weekend. So knowing that businesses can't survive, right, on you know, just opening two days a week. Um, what are we willing to do to support those, uh, those businesses? Are we willing to support residences in the downtown area so they'll support those shops? You know, it dov that dovetails nicely with the town's desire to shift uh, residential development from open green space to more developed areas. I think that's a question we still need to ask and we still need to answer. And tonight's meeting is really important because it's gonna help us set the stage for those discussions. And it's also going to help us focus specifically on the public realm improvements that we can make along Front Street and Main Street to both encourage people to go downtown as well as attract uh, the private invest investment necessary to make it a thriving town center. Tonight's presentation um, will show us the existing conditions of our downtown, but also what some of the potential improvements are along the Main Street and Front Street corridors. Afterwards, we'll be able to break up into small groups and focus on what makes Ashland great now, and then also what will make us better in the future, because I think that's something that we're really focused on together. Um, I will also say that along with the public forums that we plan on having, we plan on having this and, and two other public forums, we've also utilized a new tool called Co-Urbanize that you can find on the web, um, which serves as an opportunity to push information out about this project to the public but if you sign up, and I believe we have cards uh, that have the web address um, on the table there, or you can find it online, you can find it on our website. It also gives you the opportunity to provide input to us as to what you think is important in downtown. You can like literally go right to a map of downtown and drag and drop a, um, a marker and tell us what you think is great about downtown Ashland, what you think is missing, or what you think could be better. And so finally, uh, the last thing I just want to say is, people have asked me a lot, what separates this downtown initiative from previous initiatives? You know, it's not the first time that we have talked about revitalizing downtown Ashland. I talked to a couple earlier tonight who said, you know, it just seems like we were here maybe four or five years ago talking about the same thing. And I get that a lot. You know, the town has commissioned studies before. They've held public forums before where people came together to brainstorm and discuss ideas. So why is this one different? I think it really comes down to two words, commitment and momentum. The difference between this initiative and others is commitment and momentum. We've already shown that we're willing to make an investment in downtown and willing to try new things downtown. Town government through town meeting and town elected and appointed officials recently appropriated money at, at uh, at our town meeting to fund the Riverwalk project along the Sudbury River. Those, how many of you have been to the corner spot? Raise your hand. You know, those of you who have experienced the corner spot know that it's one of the, the freshest, most you know, unique things that we've seen in downtown in many, many years, perhaps decades. So we're, we're making progress downtown. Um, we're generating momentum, and I can tell you that we're committed as a town to start moving these ideas forward. It does us no good to sit here and brainstorm and come up with ideas if when we leave from here, things just sit on the table and there's no resources, right? There's no, there's no commitment behind it. That's what, we're, that's what makes this initiative different than previous initi initiatives, and I think what we've done before demonstrates that. And I think the private side of, of the arena is, is seeing that as well. How many of you have been to 60 uh, Pleasant Street? Or you know, have seen what they have done at 60 Pleasant Street? We're talking about a $5 million investment in the Gamewell property, a building that people have been talking about rehabbing and refurbishing for decades. It's finally getting done. People see 21 Main Street 
you know, with retail on the bottom, nine residences on the top, a brand new building. People are making investments in downtown Ashland because they're seeing the commitment of the town, not just town officials, but you. And so I'm going to encourage you all to continue that momentum and carry that commitment forward as we go throughout this process and this initiative. Because once this is done, once all the planning's done, once the engineering's done, we're going to need to take this to the next step. And we're going to need to look at things like funding, implementation, and uh, again, taking things to the next level. So again, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm really looking forward to tonight's discussion. I hope you are too. And at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Jeff Fasser of BSC Group. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. That was a great introduction and overview of what we're going to put you all to, uh, to work working on tonight. Um, again, I'm Jeff Faster. I'm a landscape architect with the BSC Group, and I'm going to kick things off tonight. We're going to do a presentation that really talks about what our goals are and what we want to hear, some, some of the different ideas we want to hear from you tonight, and then we're going to break up into uh, groups and, so you can give us your feedback. So again, it's a presentation, but the real reason to be here tonight is to hear from you. So we really appreciate the, the turnout. When we have events like this, we never know how many people may show up. We had an over under of 50, and you're well over 50. So congratulations to you, a great, great turnout tonight. Um, one of the things that we're gonna talk about in our presentation are complete streets. And as Mike mentioned, downtowns are made up of a lot of things. You know, community resources, it's a place where people live, there's commerce. Uh, but then there's the public realm. It's the streets, the sidewalks, and everything within what we call the right-of-way or the public realm, publicly owned property in downtown. And we're going to talk, we're gonna really going to focus on that tonight and focus on what makes what we're calling a complete street. And we'll explain that a little more in our presentation. We want downtown to be accessible to all. So it, there are certain regulatory requirements that we need to think about when we talk about improvements to downtown so that everybody can come, get around, uh, very comfortably, no matter what their abilities might be. Also, we always like to look at projects like this as a way to enhance your local character, your local culture, your local history. So we like to build off of what makes Ashland Ashland. So we want to hear from that, uh, hear about that tonight also. Um, one of the specific things we've been asked to look at are overhead utility wires and such. Um, a lot of communities look into this, putting these below ground so that they're not a visual intrusion into their downtown areas or some really special commercial areas. And we're going to talk about that tonight and see what you think about that, because quite honestly, it's not a cheap thing to do, but a lot of communities have prioritized that and made that something they really want to invest their money in. And most importantly is we don't plan and design to put plans on a shelf. We like to help communities implement your projects. So funding is another thing we're going to be working mainly with Mike and his staff on, but we want to not only give you plans and ideas, but help you find the funding to construct these improvements that you're going to be brainstorming tonight and really want to see in your downtown. So Mike mentioned your co-urbanize a website, and I'd like to thank everybody who's already gone there and given us input. It's been fantastic. This is what it looks like when Mike talked about. You can drab and drop a, a point. You can do that with those markers and then provide a comment. And what we've done is taken some of those comments we've heard to date. And this is something you may have seen recently. A lot of different organizations are using these. They're called wordles or word collages. So a lot of the words we heard, we put into this collage. So if you see something up here in this uh, collage, it may be something that you commented on, a suggestion you made, or something that someone else in the community has already commented on. If you haven't done this already, feel free to go to the website and add your comments. One of the things many of you did on the way in is provided a one word, provide us one word that descri best describes Ashland to you. I asked you all to put it on an index card and leave it up there. If you didn't do so yet, please do so, because we're going to take these one words from tonight and do another one of these. So if you come to our next public meeting, you'll be able to see a number of the comments that were made tonight, and we'll also post this on the co-urbanized site. So you've got to you get, start to get an idea of what your fellow residents and business owners and property owners are thinking about. 
as Mike talked about, we want to build off of existing conditions, and one of that is understanding what land uses are downtown already, uh, currently. And in this diagram here, we've tried to identify where people may be coming from, as well as where people may be going to. So when we're talking about pedestrian improvements, bicycle improvements, vehicular access into downtown, we kind of know these different points. So we've got uh, P's up here for the different parking areas, kind of the major parking areas, and we have in kind of the orange where housing is in the downtown area. So we call those generators. That's where people will be either be getting out of their house, their apartment, or their car to go somewhere. And then you have all these other destinations they may be going to that are either yellow because it's commerce, maybe an office building, or I think this blue restaurant. I can't read it from here. Uh, Pink, Pink is restaurant, and then we have retail on here too. So those are destinations. And one of the things, as you already already know about downtown, is things are spread out. So that's great and encourages walking throughout the downtown area, and we want to make that walking comfortable and uh, open to all. The other thing we need to think about is where people might be walking in the future. So this map describes, one, the current project at 21 uh, Main Street. Up there at the top, just to orient yourself. But it talks about other potential projects along Main Street. One is at the that lot now that's at the uh, intersection of Maine and Pleasant. I know a building was, was uh, torn down there recently. It's kind of an open lot now. It's been talk about housing there, talk about a park there. So that will, will certainly be a destination at some point. Uh, for years now, the town has talked about building a new uh, public safety complex. And if that ever happens, police and fire would move into that lo new location, which would open up the fire station and the police station site for some other use. Uh, it could be reuse of those existing buildings. It could be, you know, don't, don't shoot the messenger here. Some people have said the police station isn't quite their architectural style, so maybe the police station comes down and something else happens there. Um, so anyway, you can see from these different areas that are highlighted, there are opportunities for new development in the downtown area, as well as off to the left of this, Pleasant Street. It was talked about earlier, Gamewell and the investment there, but there are a number of other properties along Pleasant Street that may be redeveloped, and obviously the connection all the way out to the T station is important. So these are all places we need to think about that will in the future become destination points. As I said, we need to deal with some of the nitty gritty existing conditions out there now. You have sidewalks that are deteriorated. You have um, pedestrian crossings, we call them ramps into sidewalk spaces that don't meet current standards. So all those things we know we have to address. We have to make this downtown area accessible for people with all kinds, you know, whatever disability they may have, blind, hearing impaired, mobility problems. We need to make it comfortable for people who are able-bodied to walk around. And in doing so, we need to look at all these conditions to make sure it's a safe uh, environment for people to walk through downtown. Um, we also have some challenges. There were some places where sidewalks are close to parking areas. And the movement of people parking cars relative to where people want to walk is, it can be a conflict area. That's, again, it's a little bit of a challenge how to make sure the two can coexist, and we'd like some of your thoughts on that tonight, how those two uses could coexist next to each other. Uh, again, we talk about public realm improvements. Again, I talked earlier about the right-of-way, the, the land that the public, is in, the public owns along the streets. And typically within those areas, obviously you have vehicular access in the roadway, you have pedestrian access on sidewalks, but you can have another number of other things, such as signage and landscaping, um, places to sit, um, all those different things. And we're going to go through some of those examples relatively quickly to give you an idea of the things we want your input on tonight. And then during the break, we're going to ask you to vote on some of those and then sit down with us afterwards and really brainstorm these. But when we talk about improvements in the public right away, it could be the sidewalk. If you've got only so much space and so much has to accommodate vehicles, you've got additional space. Do you want wider sidewalks or would you like to keep on-street parking, for example? That's something we need to talk about tonight. 
If you have wider sidewalks, then that, those wider sidewalks could accommodate outdoor sitting areas or cafe spaces. So that's something else to consider as you think about how wide you want the sidewalk to be versus uh, what other uses you want to keep in the downtown. Thank you, Tom. It's a big help. Uh, public art and culture. Again, I talked about building off the local character and, and what makes Ashland Ashland. <clears throat> Sometimes that might be public art, it might be a statue, it might be a historic monument. Up here in the upper left is a project we did in Pittsfield, <clears throat> excuse me, to improve their streetscape in downtown. And Pittsfield has a long history with baseball. So in one of their little park of po pocket parks downtown, we designed it like a baseball diamond and had a baseball up there, you know, to kind of really recognize that local culture in Pittsfield. A lot of times we talk about streetscape people automatically think, well, that means planting trees. That's something else we can talk about. You may want trees, you may not want trees, but it doesn't necessarily have to be just trees. It can be lower plantings, like you see in the lower right there, just a ground cover. It could be uh, places for ornamental plantings. And we also need to be aware that when you start to talk about plantings, that involves maintenance and maintenance is an expense to the community. So you need to balance those two. If you want to see some of these things, you need to talk about how you're going to <clears throat> maintain those things. <clears throat> One community we're working in right now is recognize that and actually is a, initiating a downtown business association that'll generate funding to help maintain some of these things because they thought they were important. So there are a variety of ways of dealing with some of these costs. Street furniture can include benches, trash receptacles, bike racks, anything like that. Again, there's maintenance associated with these also. So if these are some things that you think you'd like to see downtown, again, we need to talk about the maintenance that's associated with these. Some other examples, and, and lighting is also very important for a number of reasons. It can help kind of set a style and a tone for downtown, but it's also obviously the public safety element associated with lighting sidewalks so people feel safe. <clears throat> Another thing we've started seeing in a number of projects is how can these improvements downtown start to help with what's called stormwater management. The runoff from the streets and the, and the sidewalks when it rains, right now we pretty much in downtown areas we see that rain go into catch basins, travels through a pipe and dumps out who knows where. Um, but many communities now are designing what are called rain gardens or stormwater treatment areas that actually capture that rainwater in the downtown planting bed, sometimes just to hold it and let it on its own uh, kind of percolate into the soil or else to hold it temporarily and filter it before it goes into the pipe and dumps into a wetland somewhere else. So that's something else to consider. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Heather. She's going to walk you through complete streets, and I'm going to try to capture my voice here. All right. Uh, what is a complete street? So a complete street is one that accommodates um, all travel um, users and of all ages. So completing um, a street is really the main objective um, to this project. We want. Uh, to create a more complete street along the Main Street corridor. The number one um, way to, well, the number one goal for a complete street is to improve safety for all users. And, but if we can reduce travel speeds um, of the vehicles along that roadway, we greatly can improve the safety for all users. Um, if, as you can see here, if we can reduce um, travel speeds from 40 to 20 miles per hour, we significantly reduce the likelihood of if a pedestrian or bicyclist is struck, that it will result in a injury or fatality from 73 to 13%. We also, by reducing speeds, we also increase the driver's visibility of all users. Um, and we also can drastically reduce um, the required stopping distance. So as Jeff started to touch upon um, more of the pedestrian side of a complete street, um, accommodating bicyclists is also a main uh, goal. These are some 
areas that BSC and Tool have done, um, you can have a, along with a trail, but you can also have, you know, a separated bike lane. You can have a bike lane that's um, adjacent to curb or on-street parking. Um, you can also, if the width of the roadway doesn't allow for a dedicated bike lane, you can also have a shared lane marking, which is the top right one. So to start off um, this project along with obviously this workshop, um, we're going to be conducting a parking utilization study in the area. Um, so during this, we're going to look at um, all available on-street um, and off-street public parking um, and just look at utilization um, during a 12-hour period, um, during a typical weekday and a typical Saturday condition. Um, we're also going to make some general observations for the private lots that are along the area so we can really get a feel for you know, how parking is available um, throughout the area um, and also where are we seeing it being utilized more and during what time periods, say for instance, the farmer market. All right, and I'm going to let Bill uh, finish up with Complete Streets. Thanks, Heather. Um, Bill Paley, civil engineer and with BSC Group. One of the goals of this project is to, uh, we want to accommodate pedestrians. Uh, and the way we, we're going to, our approach for that is to not only uh, look at wheelchair ramps and accessibility, but we also want to look at use of materials, um, more durable materials, uh, and where we locate those materials. Um, for instance, the photo on the left, <clears throat> We're incorporating what they call what we call a curb extension. It kind of extends the curb out into the into the parking lane uh, zone uh, and allows a vehicle to be able to see that pedestrian sooner. And we also incorporate street lighting at that location so they can see them at night. We also incorporate different materials, the type of crosswalk, the continental style versus just the ladders. We use more um, highly reflective materials so it can be seen more reflective at night. That middle photo gives, is a shot in Belmont that uh, we're going through a median, so we want to be able to accommodate if we're going to cut through a median so that um, uh, pedestrian traffic can be accommodated through that area. But again, it's, it's that visual um, look and that so vehicles can see that pedestrian not only at corners but at mid-blocks. So that the photo on the right there is a mid-block. Um, there's a couple of mid-blocks along Main Street and there's one on Front Street. Uh, so we want to be able to accommodate pedestrians at that mid-block crossing, and so it's a little more challenging. Uh, you want to make sure it's well lit, highly reflective, and the, sign, the signage is proper as well. And there's a couple of photos in the bottom there that uh, also in Belmont that kind of give you a sense of what we're trying to achieve in Ashland. Uh, there's a couple of intersections along Main Street that are signalized, and there's a couple of intersections that are not signalized. So we want to look and evaluate those intersections with respect to traffic flow, um, crashes, geometry. So we'll be looking at these intersections and also to upgrade the signals. So do we want the standard galvanized steel type equipment? Do we want the more decorative style? Um, we also, at a minimum, we want to upgrade to meet ADA standards. That means using that push button style that, that talks to you, says wait, go, um, that's the standard now. We also want to use what we call countdown timers, that photo at the bottom, the 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, uh, that visual um, need for folks to be able to see that countdown and how much time they have left across the street. Again, that photo on the upper right, uh, upgrading the equipment so the mast arm goes over each lane so each, each lane has their own signal head so they know when, when, when to go or when to stop. And then I also mentioned signage too. It's not just signage at the corners, but signage at the mid blocks. And we use a certain s standard size and uh, type of material reflectivity to make sure that vehicles can see that uh, pedestrian on the corner as well as mid block. This uh, slide shows a before and after of a streetscape project that we worked on recently. Um, 
The bottom photo is, uh, shows the existing condition, uh, showing the parking on the street. Uh, it showed the um, limited curb at the corner, um, an old sidewalk. And then what we did was we rendered that, that photo. The upper right is a rendered photo showing um, really what we're trying to achieve is that complete streets look uh, or concept, which is not just the sidewalk, but also incorporate the edging along the, the, uh, the sidewalk. We incorporated rain gardens and then also included the shared use markings on the street and incorporated the, the streetscape in the sidewalk. The photo on the left is um, what was actually constructed. So it gives you an idea of how we can render something and then we can actually um, depict it as it was constructed in the field, which is very important for this project because we want to give you the visual um, so you can see what, it's, what the signal is going to look like, what is that intersection going to look like, what is the front street or main street going to look like when it's done. One of the goals of this project is to deal with the undergrounding, so we're not going to be designing the undergrounding yet. We're going to be looking into um, reviewing the existing conditions, uh, working with the utilities, which is Comcast, Eversource, and Verizon, understanding the challenges, not just putting utilities on the ground and on Main Street or Front Street, but, but making the connection to the individual houses, making the connections to the businesses, making connections for future growth. Uh, and so that means working with the utility companies to understand what their policies and procedures are. And then finally, we want to uh, we want to come up with what what it's going to cost and a schedule. Cost is very important. The town needs to know how much money they need just to go after to be able to fund this project if they're going to go forward with it. And there's a couple of examples here that I've shown just to give you a sense of overhead utilities getting buried underground, what it looks like when we're all when we finish with the project. The upper right is a project that was more of a rural setting, but the, the lower left is what was more of a downtown setting. But you can see the difference of removing those overhead wires and making the connection to the buildings. It really changes the look and the feel of the downtown setting. So with that, I'll give it over to Jeff. So that's enough of the talking heads. Now we're going to put you to work. So what we want to do first is take about a 15-minute break. And when you came in, you may have seen those uh, the, the uh, sheets up on the wall over there. What we're going to do is give you some dots, and Heather can hand, you know, show you what we're going to give you. Uh, it's called dot voting for your preferences. So over on that sheet, we have images of different components of what can go into the public realm. And under those components, we have images that kind of show examples of what those components could be, such as vegetation, site furnishings, things like that. So you're each going to be given 10 dots to vote up there. There's also some boards in the back, so you can vote on what's stuck up on the wall. There's a, a mini-me version of that in the back. <coughs> Excuse me, right by Mike. Take your 10 dots, put them wherever you want to show us what your priorities would be. Your priority could be a certain category, or if there's a certain image you like, you can put your dots or dots on that image. You can put your dots anywhere you want. You can put 10 dots on one item if you want, or you can spread them out, totally up to you. So we're gonna take about 10, uh, 15 minutes to do that, and then we're gonna break into five groups. And you can see where these post-it large sheets of paper are. There'll be five stations around the room. So when I kind of call everybody back to order, um, you can go to one of those five stations, try to divide yourself equally. We'll probably slide a couple tables together and there'll be one or two of us at each table to facilitate a discussion, and we have, we've generated 10 questions to discuss tonight. <clears throat> one of them we already asked you on your way in, one word to describe Ashland. But we have other questions about bicycle accommodation, about utilities, um, <coughs> excuse me, a number of different things we wanna run through tonight. So we're gonna take about 45 minutes to go through these nine questions with you, and then at the end of that, each group will do a quick summary of what that is. But we're going to summarize everything we've heard tonight, and it'll be posted on the co-urbanized site. So if you miss something or your specific comment may not have been summarized at the end, don't worry about it. We're going to write it down, and we're going to post it on the website so everybody can, can understand that.
So as you've probably noticed, this session tonight's being recorded, so it would be great if the spokesperson for the group came up front and used either this microphone or that microphone so that it goes on record. And I'm sure there was a lot of great ideas in each group, and you could talk for five or ten minutes, but if you could just try to hit the highlights of your group and in like one or two minutes. Again, we're gonna summarize all the notes so they will be shared on the website. But if you could just hit the highlights from your group in a couple minutes, that would really be appreciated. Um, and then we can wrap things up and people can continue voting if they want. So, excuse me everybody, we do have to wrap it up on your discussions, please. So why don't we start over here? Jen, is your group all set? Okay. If you could come to the microphone, so you're going to be, you know, recorded for what, forever. Yes. Hello. My name is Wendy. Um, in our group, we talked a lot about the obviously the traffic patterns in downtown, but uh, making it more walkable, because right now it feels very disconnected. So obviously um, nicer areas that we can get to and from. Um, and with that, more strategically placed bigger parking areas, because I think the downtown right now, it's very congested with the on-street parking. So almost having, taking away some of that on-street parking and making bigger lots that are clearly marked um, and having maybe wider sidewalks for strollers and such with people with children um, or having the bike lane is also gonna be something that's nice. But just making it, having a better flow in the downtown area would make me more likely to park in a lot and walk a little bit. I don't think parking has to be like right on the street. Um, if we can add more wider areas, that would be useful. Um, and then a big thing is drawing more eateries into downtown, so some to have some lunch options downtown and dinner options. I know right now we kind of have like two players downtown, but to add in a bakery, a cupcake shop, ice cream place where you can go to dinner and then after dinner you can go and grab some dessert and then sit in the downtown, whether it be in the corner spot or in a nice little park or on a bench on the sidewalk, just so you feel like you want to stay downtown because right now you kind of go in and out. There's no reason to really stay, so really kind of bringing that vibrance to the downtown and, and having more options for food um, and different types of cuisine as well. So that's where we were at. Thank you. Terrific. Why don't we go to Beth's group here, which was this one in the middle. I don't know if there's a spokesperson. Yeah, let's go right through our notes. All right. Sure, bring the whole thing up. He, th this guy is a pro here. <clears throat> so as I'm sure with uh, most groups, we had quite the lively discussion. Actually, if I can take this out. There we go. It's a little bit easier. So uh, we talked about the first challenge, of course, we related to prioritization and determining uh, you know, the cost of all these various projects that we have. I'm sure we have all a ton of great ideas about what we want to see downtown, but not everything's going to be feasible in the short term. Might have to wait till the long term. Of course, we're going to have to figure out how we want to spend the money that we have. Um, but that, of course, is a big issue. Uh, I think one thing as well is determining what our objectives are, how we're going to measure success. Um, it's great to say that we have this idea of improving downtown, but what does that look like in the end? What are we hoping to get to? If we can figure that out, I think then we can make sure that this plan actually helps to achieve that. Um, question two about the bearing utilities. I think we all agree that they're, they're ugly. They ruin uh, photos, especially if we're taking photos for the public library to put on Facebook and other different um, platforms because right now they always get in the way and it doesn't look very good. Question again about prioritization, cost, uh, putting those underground. Um, we had a lot of talk about traffic and traffic seems to be a big issue. Um, during the morning, during the rush hour in the evening. Uh, we didn't have quite a solution for that, but it's an awareness that it does exist. Um, parking was interesting. We had a little bit of a different take than the other group. 
uh, and that parking, in our sense, uh, is not that there's a shortage downtown. It could be more of a distributional issue or that an issue between getting between lots, maybe people don't necessarily realize that there's a public lot behind town hall, that there are other places that you could park. Now the question is, if you park a little bit further away, I think we all, when we're driving, want to park right in front of the place that we're getting to. Sometimes that's not going to be available. Are we willing then to park a little bit further away and walk in? And I think that in most cases, there are spots. It's just a question about, do we know that those lots exist? Are we willing to walk? Are the connections there? Um, and I think that connections issue was something that we talked about quite a bit uh, because, uh, you know, for one example, you have over 100, I think, spots uh, north of the tracks. Is it something that you're going to park there and then go to a location south of the tracks if it means that you have to walk all the way in towards the town hall again, head south, and then go back? Maybe it's not likely. Maybe better signage would help. Maybe a better connection uh, would help if you had north-south one. Another connection we talked about uh, was having a clear route to Stone Park from Main Street. Um, this is something that could be feasible uh, using the public land that we have, especially if there is some sort of redevelopment that happens around the uh, police station, things like that. You might have that ability to have a route go through. It would connect to the Sudbury uh, River Trail that I understand is going to be going towards um, the park as well. Um, so you could have another way to move people around. Uh, we had a comment about the MWRTA. I don't know how many people realize that we have a regional bus system. I saw the map when I came in. Uh, for today, but I don't know that there exists one downtown or it's clear. I, I don't know where the spot, the, the pickup spot is downtown, but that could be something simple to just include a map or you know, a bus shelter. Um, we had a lot of commentary about how the sidewalks don't seem to be adequate. I think many groups probably agree with this, uh, just in terms of the width. Uh, one family was saying that they enjoy walking downtown, especially if they're going to breakfast or going to have a meal with their kids, but then sometimes they find themselves walking single file and now they have cars zooming past them and it feels like a safety concern. And so maybe it's widening the sidewalk, maybe it's implementing some sort of um, you know, physical barriers and not in the sense that we have a big fence that goes along the sidewalk, but in the sense that you might have street trees. Because if you have a tree there, then you feel a bit more protected. It's less likely that car is going to jump the curb and get you. It'll hit the tree first. You'll be safe. Um, one other thing we talked about as well is the idea of what these forums and how these forums are going to be contacting and communicating with different people. I like the co urbanized idea. I like that we have so many people in the room tonight. But I think there's a demographic uh, issue potentially. There's a lot of people that are not represented here tonight. It's a lot of uh, the kids of the town, the students of the town. Maybe there's a way to get people involved from the different schools. I don't think that that has to be just limited to, say, high school students. There's ways to get engaged with people of all different ages, whether it's coloring or whatever else, about what you like, dislike, what you'd like to see in the town. Um, if anyone in my group thinks that I didn't say anything, that we uh, had any big ideas that were out there? Great. Thank you very much. Sure. OK, the next group that it was Tom's group, that far corner back there. Then we'll go to Sheila's group, Heather's, and wrap up with Bill's. Uh, so our group talked a lot about a lot of common things that have already been discussed, but um, congestion uh, in downtown, uh, rush hour periods, uh, mostly caused by the train, uh, is, a, is an issue that people would like to work on. Um, improvements at the train crossing, um, we talked about uh, lowering the track um, underneath uh, the roadway. Uh, quite a big project, um, but at the same time, a group wanted to add that as something that it's, a, it's, it's difficult at that location, and it really does uh, block up uh, the town. So we put it as improvements at the train crossing, whatever that might include, um, but to broaden it a little bit. Um, parking difficulties. Um, a big area that we kind of concentrated on was the post office. So probably a popular spot, uh, very limited parking. Um, and also around the area when you do try to find another spot, even if it's in a private lot, um, it's difficult to cross the street or to use the signal to cross the street and get there. 
Um, I think someone had mentioned connections in the last group. Um, th that led us to talking about um, crosswalks in a lot of areas. Um, you can find a space usually, um, but having to walk up to your connection and the connection that, that's there is difficult, um, and those need to be improved. Um, pedestrian access across the track. So there was discussions about additional parking in other areas of the town that if there were a bridge that went over the track, uh, it might accommodate uh, more parking and be able to uh, spread that out. Um, but those uh, pathways, you have to, that, to build something like that, you would have to have a, a huge benefit uh, of, for parking and an attraction. Um, biking downtown, we talked about, uh, to improve that. Um, we talked about kind of the narrowness of the roadway and trying to accommodate all of the users, as we discussed earlier about the complete streets. So the vehicle, uh, parked cars, uh, bicycles, sidewalks, uh, not a lot of space. Um, but what we talked about maybe was a places where bike racks could be placed, where the destination begins on a bike, and then you park your bike and maybe walk uh, the rest of downtown, um, especially for different levels of uh, riders um, and how comfortable they are. Uh, the entrance to uh, Stone's uh, public house, we discussed that at the train tracks. Um, kind of a difficult spot um, with the, as a tra the gate drops um, and just entering in and out of there on a regular daily basis. Uh, what, what could be done about that? Uh, drainage culverts uh, beneath uh, downtown, um, that was discussed, that if you're gonna make a substantial investment to make sure that the drainage um, uh, closed system, uh, in this case these culverts, is working and they're not overflowing um, and causing problems somewhere else in town. Um, more trees and flowers, uh, some greenery downtown was a desirable thing. Uh, Permeable sidewalks and stormwater, uh, being able to handle that better, uh, infiltrate uh, and, and retain and have that um, feed the flowers and the trees. Um, having a consistent building facade or, and signage. So if you spend all this money on the roadway and you dress all of this up to try to get your zoning and your um, bylaws to be consistent. Uh, lots of people liked um, 21 Main. Um, and the look that has, um, but uh, as more is done, that it should have some consistency. And the last thing was a, a, a like. Uh, they uh, like the uh, drive-up mailbox that's been put on the uh, Front Street uh, parking lot. And that's been a real handy thing, I guess. So. Thank you, Tom. Uh, he wasn't introduced earlier. Tom Laughlin is principal with the BSC Group, uh, transportation traffic engineer and forgot to mention him earlier, so he's a part of our team. Sheila, your group. Sheila herself. I know, I did not, I failed in that part to get a, a, a representative. Uh, we, we discussed what we like about town, and it's the, smart, the quaint small town feel, um, that downtown is accessible from all, sor all sorts of directions and ways as in, and, it, and its proximity to the train station. The Falls and Mill Pond, John Stones, um, Needham Bank is a good anchor in, ta in the corner. Um, the Historical Society, there are some really nice buildings like 21 Main Street and Town Hall. Um, and also people appreciate the safety that they feel in town. Um, as far as traffic and parking, at first everybody agreed there was not enough parking. Um, but then it became a little more apparent that it was in certain places are m of more concern, and, and such are uh, the post office, as already been mentioned. Um, and the building for Lunkers, should that turn over to a restaurant, would there be enough parking to accommodate that restaurant? Or what was the other? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, country store. Um, but there is a lot of hidden parking behind, behind Town Hall, the municipal lot, and up behind the library, and I guess a, behind Erica's. So maybe perhaps some more signage would help with that. Um, we talked about traffic. The major, the, probably the largest concern is um, the backup from the trains when we have to wait. Um, let's see. Uh, and people cutting through town hall um, and a lot of d 
the commuters not staying, so they're just cutting on through town hall. Um, and then, what do we want to change? Um, making the architectural of the architecture of downtown more consistent, better signage, make the trains quieter, um, spruce up the concrete barriers were definitely, I would say everybody was in agreement that uh, nobody likes those kind of plain concrete islands. Um, we'd like more flowers. Uh, uh, Stone Park uh, needs a, a facelift and it needs to be incorporated into town, town, downtown. If it could be seen from 135 and seen from downtown, because it, it's a great asset but needs to be uh, fixed up some folks thought it was kind of seedy. Uh, let's see. Uh, another idea was to require developers to put in grease traps right away so that it opens up more options for businesses coming downtown. Uh, make, uh, continue the corner spot year round to keep a little incubator place for smaller businesses. Uh, an Ashland Buyers Co-op to guarantee these businesses some of our business. Uh, let's see. Uh, the other one of the issues was how to make Ashland's downtown more visible to out to outsiders. And a hotel and inn and bed and breakfast. I think that's a quick one. Do you all agree? Any anything else? Want to add? We had a lot of good ideas. We bounced around a lot, but uh, everybody was very enthusiastic, so we appreciate that. Thank you. Sure, get some applause. So next is Heather's group, and I'd also like to say, as we're hearing all this, obviously a lot of comments, which is what we asked for on the public realm, but I, I appreciate, and I think we all appreciate some of these other comments about zoning and design design issues, maybe design guidelines, and economic development. These are all very helpful for the town. Thanks. So we basically covered most of what we've already talked about. Um, maybe one thing that jumps out is that we think we need better street lighting downtown. Um, we need a more uniform looking downtown. We don't want to get rid of all the character of the, the beautiful historic buildings. Um, but we like the look of the 21 Main Street building, and maybe if we could develop some other spots along downtown, it would kind of bring everything together. Because right now, if you look downtown, all the different businesses have different facades and different signage, and nothing's consistent. Um, so having kind of a, a, a better look, I think, would be great. Um, we did talk about parking. We do think that, like everybody else said, it's, it's just the distribution of the parking. And I think it's also changing our mindset in town to maybe park further away and walk. We're definitely um, not, you know, being in the suburbs. Sometimes we forget that we can't actually walk places. Biking was, was big. <laughs> um, we would definitely like to see uh, biking be incorporated into the downtown plan. Um, connecting downtown to Stone Park would be awesome, and maybe the river walk could somehow help um, bring the whole area together. Uh, the medians we also talked about, um, right across from Main Street Liquors, that whole median section. Um, I know we need it because of the train tracks and stuff, but somehow making it just look a little better, like some of the images that are up over there with the um, rain catchments and things like that would be great. Um, Let's see, street art and furniture we thought would, would be important. We're kind of, you know, we don't know what, what theme. Um, what else? Did I cover most of it, group? I think we got most of it. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> and last but not least, this group here. Okay, so our group, uh, we started talking about what's best about uh, Ashland, Corner Spot, uh, Farmer's Market, Stones, uh, the potential of the downtown, um, services that they get, the post office, the market, the, the shops, and it's not always the same like trip. They would go make multiple trips, but they still like that feel. Um, the Masonic Building, someone commented on that. Um, having the Sudbury River Mill Pond nearby. Challenges, uh, traffic, 
uh, is a nightmare on Main Street. Uh, the railroad was an, was an issue that was brought up and all these similar issues. Um, trouble attracting businesses for them to stay downtown. Uh, pedestrian safety, crossing Main Street, another challenge. Um, vehicles kind of queue up along Main Street and block traffic. So there's multiple lanes even though there's only two lanes of traffic. Um, need for more parking. Uh, maintain the infrastructure, uh, the, the, the pipes, the, the underground infrastructure. Um, sidewalks not wide enough, another challenge, another issue. Uh, maintenance of um, the vegetated areas, the, the median strips and the grass strips, um, and that, that, wasn't, that was an issue. Uh, sustainability, uh, ability of the infrastructure. Um, yeah, what else we got? Uh, more challenges, um, traffic lights, having them coordinated from intersection to intersection was an issue. Um, uh, people push the button of the traffic light and traffic starts, gets upset because it's an all-exclusive stop. So all, all the approaches are stopped. So people get upset that the pedestrian is trying to cross the intersection. Um, so uh, coordination would be a solution for that. Um, we talked about water access. And one, one person made a comment that um, I didn't ask the question, uh, why do we go downtown? And the answer was to go to the post office, to go to the, the market, to go to the library. And it wasn't to go down there and stay there. So they would go and do one trip and leave. So the idea is to make it uh, inviting for people to stay and do multiple trips. That's it. So far. Okay, so that wraps it up. Um, <clears throat> so Bill is just going to talk about next steps so everybody knows where we're going to go from here. But before he does that, I just want to remind people, uh, if you didn't vote, if you didn't get dots and you still want to vote, uh, please come and grab some and give us your thoughts on the, the dot voting before you leave. Uh, the one word that you think of when you think of Ashland. If you weren't, didn't put that on an index card, feel free to do that on your way out. Um, there are going to be future meetings, so if you know, please make sure you signed in so we can notify you. We really, really, really appreciate your time tonight. This is a fantastic turnout. Over 50, over 80 people here. Tremendous input. You're sticking it out tonight. We really appreciate that, and we want to build on this energy and keep you engaged moving forward as we make some decisions. So thank you very much. But before we wrap up, Bill's going to talk about where we go from here. All right, so one announcement before I wrap up. Uh, Thursday, September 28th, from 7 to 9 p.m., in this room, there will be the third public forum for the Upper Charles Trail routing study. So just put that on your calendar. So where do we go from here? Um, we have a lot of comments. We're going to take these and cons consolidate them. Um, I don't know if we want to try to put them on the web page, but we'll figure that out. Um, next step is we've got to kind of get into the design. So um, Heather mentioned parking, so we're going to be doing the parking study. They'll be going out on, on a weekday or weekday and weekend to count or to evaluate the parking in the public lots and along the streets. Um, we've got to do some traffic analysis, so we're going to start getting into the design. We're going to incorporate some of these comments into that design. Um, we need to start coordinating with the utility companies um, and get that part of the design going. Uh, and then uh, we look forward to the second workshop. So once we get together a preliminary design together, we're going to meet again in January 2018. Do this again, get your feedback, see where we're at. And then we move on to making revisions to that design and possibly a third workshop. And then uh, the idea is to complete the design in the spring, early summer of 2018. So keep looking at the web page, keep adding comments, keep coordinating with the town, knocking on Mike's door, and, and giving them feedback. So this was really useful, and I'm really impressed by the, uh, by the uh, turnout. <laughs> That's it for me. That's it. Thank you all very much. Thank you.